What up, party people? I am Erica, and today we are talking Seeking Sister Wife, the Merrifields, the Davises, the Sherwoods, the whole shebang, okay? It was a crazy episode, so let's get into it, people. I want a happy ending, tired of pretending, won't let them get the best of me. What up, what up, what up? All right, you guys, I've been gone for a minute and my apologies, I've been sick, but I'm getting over it. So we're gonna start off with the Merrifield tonight. We're talking Garrick and Danielle. Now, as you guys remember in the prior seasons, which this is my first time covering them, but I watched them, um, or covering, I should say, Seeking Sister Wife. So they, um, Garrick and Danielle, originally they met Roberta. They, you know, uh, she actually divorced Garrick to get with Roberta. That didn't work out. And so, um, and they even dated a black woman for a while, which I loved when they were dating a sister, I must say. Um, so now they're back at it. They have another young Brazilian girl. I think she's like 26, Natalia. She, she also doesn't speak English but they in love. And um, so in this episode, let's see, let's, let me draw some pictures up. Let me hide this for a minute. So in this episode, Garrick and Danielle meet with Danielle's brother. This is her brother, Sam. And they meet with him to see, okay, you know, with him, basically Garrick meets with him and Danielle meets with um, her sister-in-law, Sam or Samantha, I should say, to see, okay, you know, what can, what do you guys think? We're, we're dating again to kind of get their perspective. Although they already know that they think they're crazy. So I love Danielle's brother because he's so sweet. I love them. I think Garrick's crazy, but the best line was, yeah, if you break my sister's heart again, I'm going to have to bury you in a hole. Ha <laughs> ha But this is the smile he had on his face while saying it. So totally, totally cool. I loved him. And they both were like, okay, why do you guys, why don't you guys take it slow? And then we find out from Danielle that um, even though they've never met her before, Garrick has already brought her a ring. Wait, what? What? <laughs> What is you talking about? Um, he's already brought her a ring. And if things work out, maybe he'll propose. So, yeah, I I totally don't get it at all. I am not getting it. Let's move on. Um, so here, Danielle kind of. Now, here's the thing. And I felt like this in other seasons. Let me know what you guys think. Danielle don't really want this. I don't think she's ever really wanted it because she always has these doubts. She's jealous, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. And so here she's going to tell Eric about her, um, about her doubts and her fears. And let's see, let's, let's see if we can do this here. I have some video. Let me share it. Here we go. You know, I see the point after what happened with the bird. I'm seeing how it broke your heart. I don't want that to hinder us, but that will happen, and it's so fresh. And I have fears that, you know, what are Natalia's intentions? Everything seems good now. God wants 
specifically to be with her, but like that fear comes in. Okay, sorry, you guys, for the little uh, technical difficulties. But right there, that's the thing that I think that's interesting. So she's expressing her doubts to him, even though they feel like God has told them, you know, that, she, that um, let's get married. Let's jump into it. But she has some serious, serious doubts. Now, this is the part here that really kind of got me tripped out. Let me get to it. Hold on, you guys. Give me a second. This is the part where I was like, wait, what? Are you doing this? Where? Okay, so now it's, that's the part that I have an issue with right there. If God tells you to do something, you do it. Um, okay, but maybe God is talking to her. Why God got to be talking to Garrick and his wee-wee, okay? God tells him, yes, I have to have a non-English, because we see Garrick has a type, right? I have to have a non-English speaking Brazilian woman in her 20s. God is telling me this. And even still, um, now what's even more interesting, uh, I won't even play it because I don't I want I don't want to get uh get strict in here, but what's even more interesting is uh they're in a garage, they're playing, they're praying, and the wind is God telling them they need to get with this Brazilian woman. Okay, now I don't want to I'm not doubting anybody's faith. But I just like I know how I am. If I see if I see the sign right, that means God wants me to go to McDonald's. So I get it to an extent. But what do you all think? Okay, are these really signs from God, or this really Garrick's horniness? I can't tell because I'm like, okay, God telling you to get with this young girl. God is telling me we need to wait and make sure she's not scamming us. That's what I feel like Danielle needs to be saying. It's not your fear. That's God talking to you, girl. That's that's your God, your Holy Spirit telling you, okay, we don't want another Brazilian hoe to take all our money. That's these are. These are just my opinions, but let me know what you guys think in the chat. So, <laughs> so here is to wrap it all up with them. So they're going to meet Natalia in Mexico. Natalia is flying from Brazil to Mexico uh, with her mother to meet them. And I love the fact that her mother is going to go with her because, yeah, don't let your daughter go out to meet no crazy people. You know, that's a good thing. Support your, support your family. But what I don't get is, now here's the part that makes me think, uh-oh, maybe Natalia's scamming. Natalia is going to meet them in Mexico. Now, what I don't like is, if you all have never met her before, why you got to bring the boys in? Why you got to get them mixed up in the beginning? And you don't even know if this girl is a scam, a catfish artist, whatever. You don't know nothing because you haven't met her in person. And she doesn't speak English that great. But still, they want to meet up with her. And so, and they bring the boys. So that part, I'm not quite feeling. They still reaping from Roberta. Give them a break. Let them go kick it with the grandparents or something. But they bring them down. And all of a sudden, Roberta and her mama are stuck and are stuck in Brazil. They won't let them board the flight. And the producers ain't shit. Because the producers are like, well, we had two people get through in the last 10 minutes. And Italia is just like, oh, there's an error. There's an error. There's there's something wrong with the connection and all this other stuff. And so I want to know uh how much were the flights? Because I think y'all been God for those tickets. Cause I think <laughs> I, I mean, is Natalia even at the airport where she at? I need to see more of the background because I just saw cream in the back. So I'm like, Natalia cashed some checks in and she and her mama are shopping. But let's see, maybe 
we we could be wrong. We could be wrong. I think they do eventually meet up. So maybe she does eventually get to Mexico. But this scene right here with them, it was giving real scammer vibes. I'm not going to lie. Let me know what you guys think. And the fact that the producers had to step in and let them know Natalia was lying. I was like, ooh, TLC ain't shit. All right, let's move on to our next couple. All right. Let's talk about the Sherwood family. So um, Shane, I actually like this couple, sort of, Ashley and Shane. So Shane um, finally gets to meet Grace. Now, what's interesting about this couple is Ashley realizes that she's bisexual, so she's the one seeking the sister wife. So um, I like that little turn around that she's doing right there with that. Uh, I really like that. You know, I think <laughs> that's a that's a unique twist. You know what I'm saying? I see what you did there. I see what she did there. She said, okay, usually the man is getting a little extra hanky panky, but right now it's all about me. Grace did not want to meet Shane. And what's interesting, I think, about this sort of dynamic is Ashley is basically going to get to kick it and she wants the people to get along, but not really date. Because obviously if you marry someone who is a lesbian, she don't do D. That's not her thing. So she ain't never going to really be that into Shane. So they meet up. They do hug or whatever, but the dinner is totally awkward. We find out that Grace is a therapist, but she do her therapy. I don't think she went to school for therapy. She don't, you know, or I don't even know, is she a therapist? She's a therapist, coach, but then she's like a spiritual healer. So basically she didn't have to go to school because the spirits tell her, to tell you what to do, which, <laughs> and then Shane is like, well, I don't even, I don't even think Shane believe in God. He's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying none of your profession, none of your profession. The whole time Ashley is like, Ooh, woo, my note, my note, my Noki is good girl. I'm good. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. love me some nookie <laughs> and <laughs> these two are going at it and uh come to find out shane is like she crazy and then um grace is like well have you ever been to a therapist and shane is like no <laughs> plus i don't believe in god so there's that and then um so Grace is like, well, yeah, that could tell. So Grace was kind of snooty, but Shane was kind of combative. Like, I don't believe in anything that you do. Come to find out and the whole time, Ashley's not saying anything. She's remaining silent. But I think in the end that she's on Shane's side because she's like, oh, she put down my husband. And he and I was like, girl, your husband says she don't he don't believe in her entire profession. Now, all of that being said, I don't think Ashley believes in her profession either. Come to find out, Ashley is actually a certified psychotherapist or whatever. She went to school. She got more than one degree. And the whole time she kicking it with Grace, like you and I do the same thing, but you hear voices and I went to school. Like, how did they not have that discussion already? That's why y'all ain't kissed, okay? Because y'all not, uh, you know, y'all not like-minded Y'all unequally yoked right now. That's how uh, y'all not equally yoked. You and Grace are not equally yoked. These, that's just what I'm thinking so far in the second episode. Let me know what you think. Now, what's also interesting is when I get home, Shane is like, well, that's a hard no for me. Uh-uh. Deuces. <laughs> Shane is like, uh, like this. <laughs> Putting up the deuces, baby. I'm out. And Ashley is like, hmm, well, I'm still thinking. <laughs> I at least want to hit it before I make any decisions. So I'll get back to you and let you know what I'm thinking. So how is that going to work if Shane don't like her spouse? All right, you guys, let me know what you think on that. But that was pretty much all that really happened with them. Okay. Let's talk the Saludin family. Naeem and Nayela. <laughs> We're calling them N and N. 
<laughs> and I will be better with their names next week. But um, so they've met someone, they're Muslim. Now, what's interesting is they've met someone, really nothing too much happened in this episode versus the first episode. They're trying to convince his mother. And that's pretty much how she looking like y'all is crazy. I know I was married into a Muslim family, but I don't re I don't believe in all the germs that extra cute coochie will bring. So I don't support it. That's pretty much all that happened with them. Nothing too overly exciting. You know, that's, that's pretty much all that went down with them. Okay. Now this is the nitty gritty here. Let's talk about the Davis families. So as you all know, they married Danielle last season. Okay. Um, another Danielle. Now what I don't understand about this one here, pimping ain't dead. These hoes just scared. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say about Danielle right now. Now, Nick, he don't work. And he has these white women over there loving him so much. They just want him to think. Now, before this, their eldest, their other, they had um, one of the other, not Jennifer, the other wife. She has a son and he is like in high school. So he is in his school. So Nick was at home all day thinking. That's what Nick do. Thinking and working out in the boom, boom room. That, that's how Nick be getting down. And that was enough. But now they want to add, I'm not clear, kind of, I don't know. Because it's like, it's not God. They're not saying God is telling them to do this. So I'm not totally clear on their motivations. Well, I should say, I understand Nick's motivation. I don't understand the women motivation. That's the part I don't understand. So the women marry each other. So if things don't go right, <laughs> Well, Nick ain't got no job, so he don't have to pay alimony to nobody. But then again, he ain't married, so they don't have to pay alimony to him either. So maybe it works. So he has the wives marry each other. So Danielle, or that's how they do it legally on paper. So Danielle married the group last year. So now they tell Danielle, okay, girl, it's time for us to get you a wife. <laughs> We got to get you a hoe so you get locked in. Now, what I want to understand, because we saw this in the Browns and Sister Wives, I want to get a clear connection on with this family, the money. Because they moved to a bigger place. They got a bigger bed. And why we all going to sleep in the same bed? Like, maybe that's why you need a wife, Danielle, so you can just have your own room, girl. Like, because I'm like, I don't want to sleep in the bed with five other people. I want my own space. And then I see y'all downstairs for breakfast. That would be me. But they have a big, huge bed. And then they have a separate room so they can get it in with Nick. See, I feel like... That should be, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I don't, I'm not a fan of the big bed, but let me know. How do you guys think about the big beds? I, I don't want to sleep in a 12 foot bed with five other people. Like I, and the more people in the bed and I'm trying to sleep, somebody's snoring, somebody's farting. Like, I don't want to do that. And I can see where Danielle is like, okay, I just got used to y'all hoes. I don't want anybody else in the bed with me. I can see where Danielle would have an issue. And plus she's like, plus I'm young. I, I, what? L let me relax. Let me take care of the baby on occasion. Let me kick it with Nick. Why y'all trying to get me legally bound, me and my job and my money legally bound to someone else. So she was having doubts already. And, and Jennifer and Nick are talking about it. And they're like, okay. Well, uh, is she, is she, is she about that life? <laughs> is she ready? Because we need her and we need another paycheck coming in. We know we're not going to make you work, Nick. So yeah, you know, Nick is, you know, taking the baby to the park during the day. So he's busy. And so they need, you know, they probably need some more funds coming in. So Danielle ha has her doubts and they know she has doubts. But the next scene or the ending scene, they come home. I guess they work nights because I'm like, how were you all not there? But Nick was there. Anyway, 
They come home in the morning. Danielle has ghosted they asses. She done packed her bags. Niggas like, what's going on? Where's the plates? <laughs> Where's the ferns, bitch? Like, they were right here in the window. She's like, um, they're at my new place. <laughs> So, you know, she been planning this for a while because she had to save up enough money. Or I don't know. Maybe her money is not going into the group. I don't know. Do they have a group bank account? Like, I don't know. But her direct deposit was going someplace else because she don't put down a deposit and got her own apartment. So that means she signed a lease and ran a credit check. She's done all of the things. And now it's the first of the month. She got to go because her apartment is ready. So they're upset. They're crying. They definitely want her back. And, uh, you know, but right here, this is their all for one. The three musketeers, they're in it for life. They're going to do it. So, you guys. All right. You know, so that so it looks like Danielle is on the run. <laughs> the other Danielle is being scammed again. and. Um, you know, very, very interesting. But here, you guys, if you're still here, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. I'm trying to get monetized in 90 days. So come on, you guys, if you're still here at the end, then like, subscribe. And I have some more now that I'm over my illness. I have some more, um, some more videos coming out. So subscribe. Ciao for now. And I will see you guys. In the next video, people. Bye. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Fuck this shit.